So, Batman. The man who goes down in history as one of the three biggest superheroes ever alongside Spider-Man and Superman, and is the one who has the most amount of movies, TV shows, and what have you. So, when it came to deciding which Batman movie I do a review of, it became very hard. Don't get me wrong, I'll look at the Dark Knight's latest film later, but for right now, let's have some fun tonight as we look at Batman Under the Red Hood. I suppose I'm going to have to teach you a lesson so you can better follow in his footsteps. Nah, I'm just gonna keep beating you with this crowbar. <laughs> So, in terms of story, the film opens on Joker brutally beating Jason Todd, the second Robin, to death with a crowbar. Batman tries to save him, but is unable to reach him in time, before an explosion goes off, taking the life of the boy Wonder. Five years pass, and a new vigilante is in Gotham City, known as the Red Hood, who murders criminals, but at the same time is trying to cause issues for multiple people, such as taking over the criminal underworld from Black Mask, but really has his eyes set on the Joker and Batman, and it's up to Batman to figure out who this figure is and has to stop him before things go from bad to worse. Now, before I get into anything else, there is something I think I should bring up. When it came to the original storyline, Death in the Family, people were given a choice, either let Jason die or be saved. However, people thought Jason was annoying, so they decided to kill off a kid. Damn, I don't know who is more insane, people who voted for this or the Joker who did the crime. One other thing that, for this review, I actually did some research about the comic this film is based on, and found out that in that storyline, characters such as Superman and Green Arrow actually appeared, and I think for this movie, it did a good idea of removing them from the story. Because, don't get me wrong, I don't mind when other heroes interact with Batman. I mean, my introduction to Batman was Brave and the Bold, and that show had an episode with a superhero every day of the week. But even so, I just think it was a good idea to cut them out for the film's runtime, since this is a movie that's only an hour and 15 minutes, and to have them would either pat out the runtime or grind the movie to a halt. Okay, now let's talk about this movie and why I love it, starting with the story. I mean, I already talked about it, but what I mean is by the pacing. There is never a dull moment in this movie, and the only time it ever goes down in terms of the pacing was when Raish talks to Bruce about how he brought Jason back from the grave. But other than that, the film flowed perfectly fine for me. There's also another matter of the Red Hood's identity. And while yes, it is kind of obvious, it's not about that. It's more so about Bruce finding out who he is and how he reacts to the child he cared for, becoming the very thing that Bruce feared of becoming. Then there is the animation. Honestly, I think the animation holds up well today, and the only thing that doesn't look that great is the CGI in the cars in the first chase scene with the Red Hood. But it's only for one scene, so I can forgive it. But other than that, the designs for all the characters looks great. The scenery at night looks beautiful and really makes Gotham look like a dump where crime runs free. And the fight scenes are excellent. Speaking of which, there are some great fight scenes in this movie. From the opening fight where Batman and Nightwing team up against Amazo, Red Hood and Batman fighting the Fatal Hand of Four, and of course, the final battle between Jason and Bruce, on the street where they first met. And with that out of the way, we can now talk about the best aspect of this film, the characters. There are six players in this story, Batman, Nightwing, Black Mask, Ra's al Ghul, Joker, and Jason Todd. Starting off with Nightwing, I definitely enjoyed his humor as the comic relief. The only issue is that I wish that there was a moment between him and Jason at some point in the film, where he found out that Jason Todd was the Red Hood. For Raish, I liked how he had a sense of honor to him. While he sees Batman as a threat to the League of Shadows, he genuinely regrets what happened for putting his trust in the Joker and leading to the death that didn't need to happen. It's also interesting how for someone who has lived for six centuries, he actually has fear of the Joker for being unpredictable. Then there's Black Mask, 
who is intimidating while being hilarious. Seriously, him ranting while beating up his lackeys will always be funny to me. And the extreme lengths he'll go to to take down the Red Hood was just pure gold. Then there's the Joker. This is one of my favorite versions of the character because of his presence. He is truly unpredictable throughout the entire movie. Hell, when Black Mask breaks him out of jail, he murders his men and even ties up Black Mask, planning to set him on fire to get the Red Hood's attention, which is actually a nice callback to earlier in the movie where Black Mask had one of his guys try and set one of Red Hood's guys on fire to get Red Hood's attention. I also just love him whenever he's interacting with Batman, like that scene where he's being interrogated, you just get the sense that he is trying to dig deep at Batman and make sure to send him over the edge, especially when he makes fun of Jason Todd. Though there is something I want to bring up real quick, he brings up in that scene that he knows that this is the first Robin, Nightwing. This is something that kind of bothers me. How the hell did they know that? Like. Seriously, does Nightwing go around Bloodhaven saying, Hey, Batman didn't let me play Xbox for a week, so screw him, I'm now Nightwing. I was the original Robin, by the way. That always bothers me. But in terms of other things I like with the Joker, I also liked how when Jason was beating him with a crowbar, he was actually laughing at it, as if he was enjoying all the pain he was getting. And how at the very end of the movie, when everyone has a chance to leave, he decides to get the last laugh by trying to make sure that nobody escapes the explosion. Finally, we have... Batman and the Red Hood. Both characters I'm talking about at the same time. So, let's start with how they met. Jason was stealing wheels off the Batmobile and Bruce took him in. In the flashback to Jason as Robin, in a matter of two minutes, we get a perfect showing of their dynamic. Jason started off as a young, overconfident kid who loved being Robin, but over time, that reckless behavior took over as when he's a teenager, he shatters a dude's collarbone with the excuse of, He's a drug dealing pimp. I didn't think I had to prop up some pillows before I took him out. Yeah, fun fact. In that scene, he's voiced by Phineas from Phineas and Ferb, which as someone who grew up with that show is hilarious to me. Anyway, back on track, when he's the Red Hood, that cockiness and brutality shows up as he kills the lieutenants of the crime bosses to show he means business. But even with that, he does show some sense of dignity, telling them that if they sell drugs to kids, they'll get killed. Also, how he pushes Bruce out of the way during a fight to take a laser blast for him. Now let's talk about Batman in the movie. I know I shouldn't bring up what other reviewers said, but V and Fuso, who I hope to god I made a correct pronunciation, if I didn't I apologize, made an excellent review of this movie and brought up a point I think I should also bring up in this review. How Batman caused both Red Hoods to come into this world, not saving the Joker from falling into the acid caused the Joker to be born, who also in this universe paralyzed Barbara Gordon and not saving Jason caused the second Red Hood. Well, in terms of the Red Hoods that matter in the story, since they do bring up how this is a common name used by most criminals. I also like how throughout the story, we see how Jason's death affected Bruce. How, you know how I mentioned that prison scene earlier? Well, now I'm gonna bring it up again. He almost chokes the Joker to death. Or how when Jason is revealed to be alive, even Alfred is shocked by this and Bruce spends all night digging up Jason's grave to find out if it's a fake or not. Also, side note, but I also enjoyed the moment where Bruce tells Nightwing, thanks for the help. It's a small moment, but it was a sweet one. Then everything builds up to the climax. Both Jason and Batman have clashed throughout the film, not just in terms of fighting, but on points of view how there are criminals who aren't afraid of the Batman. But Still, it all comes together when they fight at the place where they first met several years ago, and it brings them to the place where Jason has a Joker tied up, and this is one of, if not my favorite scene in any Batman movie. I love how Jason brings up good points about the Joker. He is someone that has done so many awful things, paralyzing Barbara, murdering countless of innocent people, and including murdering Jason, but... I also enjoyed how Jason isn't mad about not being saved. 
more so the fact that Bruce didn't avenge him, as if Jason didn't matter at all to him. One of the reasons Jason is my favorite Robin is that he doesn't feel like a villain, just a victim who only wanted his dad to avenge him. However, Bruce tells him that he always thinks about murdering the Joker, but if he does that, Joker wins, and Batman won't be able to stop himself from taking more lives. And even when Jason puts Bruce in a situation where the only options are to either kill Joker or Jason kills the Joker, Batman finds a way to save both of them. The movie started with Batman not being able to save Jason from the explosion, but now he is. And I like how we don't even know what becomes of Jason afterwards. Now, before I get into my final thoughts on the movie, I just have to say this about the ending scene. It is one of the most haunting and chilling endings to any superhero movie I have ever seen. It ends where it all started, when Jason was donning the Robin costume for the very first time. I like how this scene is surprisingly wholesome, especially when Batman tells Jason that he was able to see him hiding behind the computer banks. But then we get this line that just breaks me every time. This is the best day of my life. The reason why this line breaks me is because of the fact that for us, the movie is ending, but for the characters, this is just the beginning of the film. And I think that's one reason why I think that was a perfect note to end on, in my opinion. So that's the end of the review. And I love Under the Red Hood. It's still my favorite Batman movie in so many ways. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the Batman and I love the Dark Knight. And next time, in terms of movie reviews, I will be reviewing the Batman. But here's the thing. With those two films, they had double the running time of this film. Meaning they had more time to tell their stories. But with this film, even though it's only half the runtime of those two, well, more specifically, the Dark Knight, I think it was able to create a compelling storyline with Batman, Joker, and the Red Hood in only an hour and 16 minutes. It blows my mind to no end. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this review and see you all next time. Bye.